Hi, and welcome back to Learnster.com. Um, we just decided we're going to do a little jam. We're going to improvise some light painting and have a bit of fun with you. Um, we, we're going to have some guests. I'm going to um, invite a few of the Learnster.com team, the crew, to come and light paint. And um, I'm going to do a few myself and just see what comes up. We don't have the funky bass and the funky beat, but <laughs> we have heart, and that's all we need. <laughs> so, are we ready? Yeah. Yeah? All right. So, I'm going to try the light blades. I'm going to mix two colors and see what happens. Shutter open. Shut it close. <laughs> Couldn't find a button on that one. All right, this is fun. This is great. So I think our next guest is going to be Paul from Learnster.com. He's uh, part of the crew. He's going to try something, mixing two tools together, and we'll see what happens. I picked this blue thing that looks like a knife. <laughs> and the thing with the tassels. Water so, uh, effect. Shutter open. Shutter close. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. It, it seems like they're following about the same movements, and that's what makes it connect yeah, together. Can I try another one? Please go ahead. All right, shutter open. That's good. Good reflex. Excellent. He put the light behind his back because he couldn't find it. Hey, that's pretty awesome. I love the colors. I love the movements. Very nice. Awesome. Okay, so let me do another one, and after we're going to have our second guest. I'm going to go with the light blades again. I'm going to go pink and red. When I discovered that pink and red can look great together, I started using those more and more in my portraits. And I think pink and red is a very, um, an awesome combination. So, shutter open. Oh, I think we need to change the battery on this one. It seems a bit weak. Maybe it's just the gel that's thick, but it seems to me like I should check the battery and maybe put a new one in. Okay, shutter close. Nice colors. Uh, yep, great combination of colors. And on that red, we have some yellow that's, it's so bright on some spot that it became yellow, which is great. So, um, while I change the battery, we're going to have John, who's going to do, he's going to use the, the fire tool to um, give us a, a light painting. But we should change the aperture to f8, maybe. Very nice. It's a great beginning. We have some people here are trying light painting. We could say for the first time, almost for the first time. So you see how easy it is and how possible it is. You just try and have fun, and you know whatever comes out comes out, and then you keep going. You don't try to become good at it. You don't try to judge yourself. You just you just light paint. 
All right, I want to try uh, God's Beat in Pink by itself and see if I push it somewhere else. We're at F8. Okay, I'm going to try F8. Shutter open. Okay, shutter close. I'm trying to get uh, the three-dimensional space to happen with this tool. I want to try to f make it so we feel depth that it doesn't feel like 2D, but it feels more like 3D. Let's shutter open. Shutter close. Nice. We've got a nice mixture of both texture of the constant and the strobe happening here. The colors, the exposure seems to be good. Um, I want to know who wants to do another one? Okay, we got Paul who's going to do the next one. Feather These tools, okay, we can probably leave it at that. F8, okay. yep. Feather and tassel. So, uh, Shutter open. Shutter close. Nice. I'm a little short, if you can see. Yeah, <laughs> you could be working a bit higher, or we could readjust the camera. I like the idea of mixing, uh, uh, of using two tools in one hand to uh, follow the movement. It's a good idea. Uh, this one, $2 tool. Let's see if we can jam with this. Um, let's do F11 or F16, please. Okay. Shut it open. Shut it close. We got some nice trails happening here, some good movement. It's a great tool to use. Um, does anybody want to try this one? John, you want to give it a shot? So this one you just press in the center. Just hold it like this and you press and it goes, thing. yeah, the whole thing. And you take off your finger to, right, and your center is there. The exposure is good, so we're good to go. They're open. Nice. Got some good gymnastic happening here. <laughs> it's excellent. We have some nice trails and some nice, um, some nice. Uh, Patterns. I like the, the center lower part where they crossed, when one line crossed with the other ones and it made kind of diamond shapes. Sweet. That's really nice. That's a beautiful, uh, beautiful piece right there. Excellent. It looks like a logo for Star Trek. <laughs> nice. Um, there's this one. There's different ways to move this one. I want to try, I'm going to bring it down a bit. I want to try to create more organic movements when I move. I just want to experiment with this. So if we get the camera ready for the shutter, and if we can open the shutter, I'm already moving, shutter open. I want to let it flow naturally where it goes play with its weight and see what that would do. Shutter close. I went, it was a bit repetitive towards the end. We'll see if it works. Uh, it's overexposed. So what we do is we try again. I'm gonna bring the light down a bit. 
and then work with layers instead. Okay, shutter, open. Shutter close. So that does. Much more interesting because I went darker with the tool, then the layering becomes rich. So I like this texture, I like this exposure. I would keep going with this. Who wants to try? Uh huh. Right, this way, yep. That's, oh, I see. Yeah, you can do layers with this. Not this thing is. Oh, it's a neon, portable neon, yep. Cool. You can hide it behind your back and switch it on right away. Okay, uh, shutter. F16, you can go slowly with it. Nice, the exposure is good. If you kept going, it could have been like graffiti and writing, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, I just realized something that I haven't had the chance to show you before, and we can do this right now. The flash is uh, the strobe. The handheld strobe is a very, very cool tool we can use in many different ways. Um, I'll show you the basic is just creating these kind of light patterns and and this decor behind. It's fun um, to use behind a model. Yes? We have a question from Alex talking about the flash. Yep. So uh, Alex asks, uh, is there any tips for portraits involving flash and other light tools together? Could you repeat the question because I don't have a mic? Right. So uh, Alex, is that correct? That's correct. Alex asks us a question. Um, about the flash, if there are some tricks to integrate the flash and other tools on a model. Um, tomorrow we're going to be talking a bit more about this. I can answer um, more in detail tomorrow, but you can use a flash on a stand. Um, do your regular lighting without the modeling light on, keeping the modeling light off, and then have a beautiful lighting on your model, pop the flash, and then in the dark come in and add an, another layer on the same exposure. That's, uh, that, that's, it's been done before, it works very well, it can get, it's very useful if you're doing com commercial photography or if you wanna create your own style of photography and uh, light painting. Personally, I like to have, to consider myself a 100% light painter, I wanna use the flash in my hand and um, use it while I'm moving. This is the way I, I, I use, to, I like to use the flash. On some commercial job, I'll put a flash on a tripod and because the client has certain needs, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that. Um, if the model is, if you're just light painting and the model is moving a lot and you're getting, uh, uh, you're having difficulties having a sharp picture, uh, a sharp face or sharp eyes, you can use the flash to freeze the model in the image and then do light painting around as long as you're not coming back with another layer of light painting on the face, it should stay very, very sharp. So I hope this answers your question and thank you very much for asking. And tomorrow we'll go deeper with the model and the, the, the flash technique. But right now I'm gonna show you how I use the flash sometimes to create backgrounds or flowing energy uh, around a, a model. Uh, if we can have the shutter open, Shutter close. So I'll, I'll use strobes like this and I'll create something around the model or sometimes I'll use it a bit darker. I can cut the power a bit on the flash and I'll use it a bit darker and then you'll have uh, some kind of 
magic happening. It feels like night sky, it feels like fairies. It feels like, you know, it could be uh, enhancing a scene in the woods at night. You can have all of these flowing around in, in the woods and that would create this kind of magical aspect. There are ways to modify your flash um, to make it m look less like a, a rectangle. You could change the shape using tape or uh, black, cardboard black uh, construction paper. And that, that would be another way to, um, to, to use it. Um, often I'll use it very close to the face. When I'll, I'll be with a model, sometimes I'll just create textures and blasted pieces of skin that's just going straight to pure white. And sometimes I'll create these images that are a bit like Picasso-esque, cubist uh, paintings. And that can be a fun and very creative way of expressing a portrait or an image. So again, the flash is a great tool. I have a more sophisticated flash, like the Sigma who has a strobe on it, and I have some very old Vivitars that are all completely manual that I've had for 20 years that are still working, that I'll, I'll, I'll pop the flash one, one, one pop at a, at a time and I'll just play around. But this one has a strobe integrated. So let's do another one with the flash. Shutter open. Shutter close. We might see, uh, I, I pointed the light towards me. Uh, see a little bit. Um, so the flash was pointing more towards the lens and sometimes less towards the lens, which is just a bit more profile of it. And you can see how it can create a, a world of, of, of mystery or you know, it can create a, a decor energy moving around. It can be a lot of fun to, to enhance an image or to create something special. That's for the flash. Um, let's do a few more jams. There's, I wasn't completely satisfied with my pink and red, so I'm going to try again. The shutter's a bit more closed, so we'll, we'll, I'll try this one. I'll add up some layers and see where it goes. Shutter open. strokes with the pink and then let's see what I do with red. textures. And I'm going a bit random on this one. I'm just testing and experimenting, see where it goes. This one, the button's at the end, so my movements are different. They're limited, but at the same time, maybe it could create something interesting. Shutter close. <laughs> it's interesting. I would probably turn it 90 degree counterclockwise and it would probably be more interesting for the picture. Um, my red could be a bit more pinkish. It clashes a bit. It's a bit orangey. If I choose a different red and make it more um, towards magenta, I could probably make the mix together better. Let's do... Rotate. We cannot find the rotate button. We can do it later, it's okay. Let's uh, open the shutter. 
And let's play with this guy. Shut it close. And let's see what that does. Oh, very cool. See how it, uh, I don't know if you see it on the monitor, I know on the TV we see the details in the gray, the light was hitting on the dark gray background, so it added on the monitor, it seems a bit darker, I don't know if we see it or not. Do we see the light on, yeah? Okay, great. So just twirling it, creating spirals with a little center. We could easily do some kind of DNA effects. With this you can easily see that this could lead to like some kind of DNA effect. Could be very cool. Um, um, does anybody would like to try the light blades? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We got Paul who wants to try. Do you know which one you would like? No. Is the red? Is the pink? Sure. <laughs> okay. So the button is on the side. I gotta hold this. Yeah. If you hold the button for a second, then it's gonna stay on. If you just press it on and off. Oh, I see. And then. All right. The, the little button, uh, the, the smaller button just under, it's strobe. Okay. They're just next to one another, and this one is like, now it's on. You just press it for a second, and then it's on. You press it again, and it's off. Okay. Shutter. Work high. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Got some good movements there. Yeah, it's good. You got some nice movements. I like that last strike, just the strobe just coming in to the camera, making a highlight. It's nice, beautiful textures. Can I try one more thing? Sure. Will this fit through there? This, fit will, this will fit through there like this, probably, yes. Can we access the button? That's a different story. No. <laughs> so you have to use your back. Okay. So a circle light with a flashlight in blue. Alright, so find the way. Shutter open. Hey, sweet end. <laughs> That's great. That's great. The light is inside the tube. Fantastic. Okay. That's a nice one. Good idea. Thank you, Paul. Oh, the, uh, it's on the side, on the edge of the, uh, yeah. On the edge of this. Um, this we haven't tried, really. Oh, Paul, can you come and light up this switch for me? Right there. See those two boxes? Yeah. Can you light up uh, one? Uh, no, I can't see. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's one. That's perfect. Let me get it here. This is a, this is a Kino Flow. It comes with a rope, uh, with, it's a professional uh, cinema and photography light. Um, the Microflow is the same company, Kinoflow. It's a good, it's a good neon, it's daylight. It doesn't have a dimmer like the ice light, but it's fun to play with. You can get very organic with this, and um, it makes great backgrounds for models if you want to create a, a background for a model. Uh, if we can add, can you stay close to the, yeah, thank you. Uh, shutter open. You can really 
play with it. The only thing is it has a wire. That's the downside of it. You can just play and create patterns and texture. I always try to get very organic. Try to close. Again, it looks a bit like the ice light. We're, we're very close to it. The advantage, can you turn it off? Turn on the other one. The only advantage is you can get a four feet neon and that's great if you're light painting a car. It will make amazing reflections on the car. It'll be a great tool. I used it a lot on the Toyota project and the Honda project in Japan. It was such a good tool because of the way it reflects in the car. So the neons are amazing to make beautiful reflection on objects, on, uh, on people also, and uh, on, reflective, yeah, on reflective objects, that'll be awesome. So, uh, turn off the light. Yep, thanks. Shutter open, light on. And again, I taped one side in black, and uh, it allows me to make the light disappear. Shutter close. And it's a big brush, it's a huge brush. But we can definitely make some good stuff happen with this. Um, very organic feeling, 3D. And I find it a bit bright, I would darken it a bit. Uh, if we go one f-stop lower, uh, yeah, well, if you can close it to 22, yeah, 22 would be perfect. Shutter open, lights on. Thank you, that's great. Shutter off. Is this, that's what I just did? Oh, it looked like the other one. <laughs> Mm. Um, no, it's a bit darker. You see more details and get more shades in the darks and in the highlights. Uh, sometimes I, I make sounds when I light paint. I allow myself to express sounds also. And also, I'll, uh, sometimes I'll just make sound effects like it, it makes it more dynamic for me. It could be, sound weird to somebody who hasn't seen me <laughs> do light painting before, but it's actually helping. To, uh, to express and to let go and to get into the feeling. When you're going for it, then you. It, it, it allows your mind to let go and it, stops, it helps you to stop thinking and just get into the movement and become one with the movement. So often I'll use sound to enhance my experience and put more energy into everything that I'm doing. So, where are we at? This time, so. Okay. <laughs> the infrared light just went off. Uh, so, we just used another light. I think that's it for the, the jam for today. I think you got a good feeling. Uh, you saw some guests who never really light painted before. So, they, uh, you can see how you just get into it and you have fun and you try it and you see what happens and you keep going. Um, I want to go through a bit of, uh, uh, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, how I use the computer in the, um, in, uh, with the light painting. So, uh, personally, I have a, a way of doing uh, Photoshop or uh, Lightroom or any computer software the same way I would do with, uh, in the dark room when I was printing my own uh, photographs. I, I printed in darkroom color and black and white and we used to dodge and burn and we have a few tricks to make the picture come out well. So I kept that, that uh, knowledge and I've used it inside uh, uh, the computer, inside software to enhance my pictures. I don't like to modify my pictures a lot because I don't see the point when I can do everything in camera and get this amazing shot happening in camera, then I'm really proud and I'm really uh, happy to share this and say, wow, did this in camera, this is a real picture, and, um, and here it is, and here's how I did it. So there's a, a pride to it. 
that makes me want to always do the best I can while I'm shooting. And I have no set rules, and I'm not saying what you should or shouldn't do. It's up to you. But just be honest about your process, stay transparent, and if you say to people, oh, this is what light painting, but actually use three pictures to layer them and do this final result, it's fine. You're allowed to create however you want. It's your life, it's your creation, just go for it. I think that the most important thing is to be honest and transparent about it and talk about your process, where you're at, what you're exploring, and nobody's trying to pretend that this was done in camera when it's not. It's not so important. What's important is to look at the process and the final result and, and share it and learn from it. So I use, the, I use Lightroom Photoshop to enhance the pictures. Sometimes I like to bring one out and put it on Facebook or put it on my site and say, this is your Photoshop. It's really straight out of the camera. I even tweaked anything. That's what um, the light painting sculptures on my site. That's, that's on one example where there's like zero adjustment. It came out impeccable. I was so happy with it. Uh, others, I've, I've actually, in, on some shots, I've played with the out of focus, trying to make a lot of stuff blurry and just keep one part clean. That was, that was fun. Uh, I'd like to do that in camera the next time and explore, explore it a bit like that. So I think tomorrow we go, uh, after we shoot with the model, we're gonna do a bit of um, uh, computer enhancement and I can show you what I, what, what I do and how I work. Usually I have a tablet and I do a lot of just dodge and burn and just quickly, I don't go too much into details except if one eye is really darker than the other and she looks a bit weird, maybe I'll dodge it or burn it a bit more. But usually it's just, you know, a bit of shadows, a bit of highlights, this, this, this and that. And I don't spend too much time retouching. I feel it takes away a lot of the essence, it takes away a lot of the, uh, what was present at the shooting. If you have a client and they have some needs, which happened to me before, it did happen for, for commercial reasons where we had to do some light painting afterwards on the black background and add it in the shot. But this is what the client needs, so hey, let's do it like that, and it works, and everybody's happy. Um, and, 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 and voila, I mean, as you've seen today, straight out of the camera, there's already a lot of contrast, a lot of saturation, there's already textures, there's already so much there that you really don't need to do much on your, your pictures, unless that's what you want to explore. So do we have anything uh, to add? Do we have any questions? Do we have any messages? Okay. We're good? Okay. So should we wrap for today? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay, great, let's wrap up. I'm, uh, we're starting tomorrow, 10 o'clock, um, same place, learnster.com. We're going to do the second and final part of our workshop. Um, and the, our, our main is to work with the model and how to get the energy going, chemistry, technique, lights, and, uh, and a bit of, of digital. And of course, tomorrow, same thing. If you have questions tonight and you want to ask them tomorrow or you want to send us an email on my Facebook or learnster.com, just, yes? Learnster.com has a page? Facebook page, yeah. Learnster.com has a Facebook page. You can post and send us messages. We'll be happy to answer your questions. So I'll see you tomorrow. My name is Patrick Rochon. I'm a professional light painter. And if you want to see some of my work tonight, it's, uh, it's patrickrochon.com. Thank you very much, and see you tomorrow.